Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's video, I almost said episode because I'm used to recording podcasts. On today's video, I am going to share with you seven things that seven things that I did to ensure that I got my period back. This was a very long journey and I do want to make a disclaimer that everyone's different. Everyone's journey is different as to how they lost their period, as to what they need to do to get their period back. But this is my journey and I loved watching videos like this when I was trying to get my period back. So I want to make sure that you have plenty of resources and support systems on the internet um, to help you through your journey. I lost my period in 2014, right after I graduated high school. I talk about this in my orthorexia video and I also talk about this in my birth control video. So you can see those linked down below. But I lost my period from 2014 and didn't get it back until 2019. So that was five years without my menstrual cycle. And it was really frustrating. However, I knew that a lot of the damage I did to myself Sure, birth control did have something to do with it, but a lot of it was something that I did to myself by under eating, under fueling myself, over stressing, and really just having a higher stress load than my body could handle. What happens to your body when you are going through hypothalamic amenorrhea is basically you, your body sees everything as a stressor and that is why you're not getting your menstrual cycle. Um, the main reason that I lost my period was because my big stress was losing a bunch of weight and then keeping it off and having not having enough food, which was considered a stress for me and anyone in general. If you're not eating enough and you're over exercising, there's a huge energy expenditure and not enough calories coming in to actually fuel your body. So that is seen as a stressor to your body. So let's get into my steps into how I got my period back. And this will actually be a series that I'll be doing. Um, I'll talk about different steps. So this video will be how I got my period back. And, and the next video will be something like things that you can expect on your journey to recovering your period, like weight gain and everything like that. I'll talk about that in more detail in other videos because I don't want to make this one too long and I don't want to stress you out or make you nervous. Um, so let's just get right into it. The first thing that I did when I was going through my journey with hypoflame gonorrhea to get my period back was I shared what was happening to me with loved ones and I asked for help. So it's a scary journey there, especially if you're like me going through some type of eating disorder. Some women lose their period from exercise and it has nothing to do with an eating disorder. But if you're like me and you've had an eating disorder, which most women have some sort of disordered eating, it's literally insane. Almost every single woman I've ever met has had a past with disordered eating or disordered mindsets around food and exercise. So if that's you, then it's going to be really important that you accept what you're going through and you tell others about it so they can support you. And really just the first step is speaking it out loud. I did not speak about having an eating disorder the entire time that I was going through it. I didn't think I did have an eating disorder. And it wasn't until I did a lot of mental work and started looking up why I wasn't having my period and following other people's journeys that I realized I did have an eating disorder. It was an issue and it was affecting my health. What did I do is I started talking about it with my parents. I started talking about it with my friends and they had a lot of sympathy for me and really wanted the best for me. It was scary to do that, but having that support was super helpful and it encouraged me to keep going down my path. For example, I told my boyfriend about it too and he was super supportive with what I was going through because I mean, we're in a relationship and I think it's very important to be honest with something like that, especially if it's going to be consuming a lot of your life and a lot of your mindset, if it's a stressor or something that you're working towards. Lost my period because of stress, but not having a period was giving me stress. So I had to share it with my loved ones so they would understand what I was trying to do. During this process, I did a lot of reflection. Um, like I said, I had to 
work up the courage to even say out loud that I had an eating disorder. Um, with this, I did a lot of journaling. I did a lot of meditating. I did a lot of mindful walks. I did a lot of just internal work that I was able to do mostly because I lived by myself for a really long time, like a year pretty much. And I was alone, alone with myself, and I wanted to feel good. So I started discovering my certain habits or certain tendencies that would seem more disordered and uncovering why I felt this way. And it was very interesting because I actually kept a journal throughout college and I looked back through some of my pages in my journal and I was shocked at the things I was saying about myself. It was so sad. And I was like, I never wanna say this kind of stuff to my, I never wanna say this about myself again. So doing that reflection and really understanding what was going on in my head in my head was very, very important. So with telling people about trying to get my period back and wanting help, I did a lot of researching to try to figure out who to seek help from and what to do on my own. I wasn't in the position to that I wanted to make a big financial commitment to have some type of health coach or anything like that. So I really just started listening to podcasts um, and I will have them linked down below. Like Well-Fed Women, that one really, really helped me understand what was going on with my body. And if you listen to my podcast, one of the speakers or one of the hosts from Well-Fed Women will actually be my guest in the near future. So look out for that. Um, but anyway, it was something that I literally had to binge listen to their episodes to help me understand what I was doing was wrong and keep having that confirmation that I needed to make a change. And I didn't change anything for a while, but having that confirmation and doing the research and finding all of these articles and videos and podcasts just validating what I was thinking, it was what helped me seek help. And while doing this researching, I finally found someone I knew could help me. And it was actually from looking at podcasts. I literally went to Apple Podcasts and I typed in hypothalamic amenorrhea and I found Laura Schoenfeld, who was my dietitian health coach. She is a registered dietitian, but also does health coaching. And she helped me throughout this journey. And it was a financial commitment, but I will tell you one thing, it was worth every single penny that I spent because it helped me get my period back and it was me committing to this journey. So that was a very long first step, but that was a huge, huge importance in my journey. And it literally, that step took me a year and a half before I actually started doing the work. It took me a year and a half to really talk about what I was struggling with and commit to getting healthy. The second step to getting my period back was eating more. Once I was working with Laura Schoenfeld, I also started reading the book, No Period Now What? And it'll be linked down below by Nicola Rinaldi. And that really helped me open my eyes to that this is like a, a huge problem that's going on with women nowadays. It's not just me and a couple people, it's a lot of women. So I started reading that book while working with Laura and both Laura and the book confirmed that I needed to eat more calories. And the reason that I was not as hungry was because I was dieting for so long, so my metabolism slowed down, and therefore my body was not asking for much food, even though I had this huge energy expenditure from working out a lot. And that's why I wasn't losing weight when I wanted to, because my metabolism was so low, it was in a very stressed state, and it was trying to hold on to all the fat it could to make sure my organs and everything were healthy. So I started eating more despite everything I did in the past, you know, trying to lose weight and trying to obsess over my food. I just said, screw it, and I ate a lot of food. And what that looked like for me was at least, like I wanna say 2,400 calories, but more like 2,800 calories. Like I ate a lot of food, and some days it was way more than that. Some days it was a little less, but I never dipped below like 2,300 calories, and I just listened to my body because what happened was when I started fueling myself, it was insane. I didn't feel hungry. And then when I started forcing myself to eat more, I was ravenous and couldn't stop eating. And it felt really, really good to fuel my body. And sure, I got bloated and sure, I, I did start gaining weight. And I'll talk about that later. But it was worth it because I finally was eating enough for my body and I started feeling better in general. Like my energy was better, my mood was better, 
my skin and hair were getting better and it just felt really nice. I was sleeping better and yeah, I could, I could tell things were starting to work when I started eating more. In order to eat more food, um, I had to switch what I was eating. I went from mostly eating whole foods like fruits and vegetables and eating more like a paleo diet um, and I was eating that way for about two years at this point and then I switched more to, I added more processed food into my diet and that's because with the whole foods approach and eating mostly paleo, I was more satiated than I needed to be. I needed to get hungry so I needed to eat more foods that would burn through my system a little bit quicker, therefore allowing me to eat more food. I also started exploring fear foods, and I'm sure those of you who have gone through an eating disorder can relate to me when I say fear foods, because even if you don't think you're afraid of something, there are foods that we've told ourselves that we cannot eat for whatever reason. Maybe we just think it's bad, that's a fear food. I took off all those labels and it took me a really long time, but one example for this would be milk. I didn't drink milk since like 2014 before I went into college and I had it on like small occasions, but for the most part I did not drink milk. And after going through Laura Schoenfeld's program, she talked about how milk is an important food to add into your diet to get your period back if your body can handle it, if you're not lactose intolerant or anything, because it has vitamin D, you're getting calcium, you're getting protein, you have little carbs in there, and it's just something that really tastes good too if you can add it to certain recipes. So I went to the store and I got organic grass-fed whole milk and I started adding this to my cereals and to things I wouldn't normally have used, I where I would have used like almond milk. And I started eating like whole ice cream. I started eating more bread. I started eating more desserts, like legit went to the store, got some cake, desserts. And it felt really nice to just eat whatever I wanted whenever. But this was, it was hard at first, but as I went through it, it just, felt amazing and I didn't want to go back to my old ways. The third thing I did to get my period back was reduce or eliminate exercise in general. And I say reduce or eliminate because in the beginning I reduced exercise to, I want to say I was working out probably like five days a week on average. Some days it was six or some weeks it was six, some weeks it was like three or four, but on average it was about five days a week. And I started by reducing my exercise to about three days a week. It consisted of light walking, yoga, and like two days of lifting. Um, and it was fine, I felt okay, but what happened that was kind of amazing and horrible at the same time is I was struggling with a shoulder injury for years and it got so bad when I began my journey to get my period back when I was all in and I could not exercise at all. Like, at all, I could barely move, I could barely hold stuff. So I was done exercising for about a month. And even then, when I was allowed to exercise, when I got the okay to exercise by my physical therapist, she, I had to ease back into it. So when I started eating more food and I stopped exercising completely, and I literally did this for a month, I got my period the next month. And the other things I'm going to talk about really played a part, but these were the two huge things that happened that told my body that I was safe and gave me my period back. Yeah, I know you guys aren't dumb, so when you're eating way more than your body's used to because your metabolism is slow, even though it's enough food for you, and you stop exercising, what happens? You gain weight. And that was a big side effect that I did not want to accept. That's actually one of the reasons why it took me so long to embrace this journey because I didn't want to gain weight. I was very obsessed with my appearance, but this was kind of like me surrendering and me finally saying it's okay and that my body does not hold all my worth. I would say that gaining 10 pounds or 15 pounds in that Overall, I gained, I think, 20 pounds, but in that month, first month, I gained like 10 pounds, and doing that was probably the best thing I could have ever done for not only my health to get my period back, but for my ego, because I was just literally obsessed with how I looked and obsessed with every little thing about my body. The fourth thing I did to make sure I got my period back was sleep more. This goes hand in hand with everything I already talked about. I 
was not exercising, so I had so much more time on my hands. I didn't have to get up at 5 or 6 a.m. to work out in the morning. I slept. I slept in. Some days I could barely get up at 8 o'clock because I was exhausted and I slept for like 12 hours. But other days I could get up and feel okay. And I did this for about, I wanted to say like two to three weeks. And finally my body felt okay. And I was sleeping like seven to eight hours like a normal person. I should say more like eight to nine hours because most people need eight to nine hours anyways. Um, so I did this. I just allowed my body to sleep and honored it. And that helped me lower my stress load because sleeping is one of the best ways to de-stress and reset your body. And it really just felt amazing to catch up on my sleep. I was obviously very sleep deprived during my dieting and crazy journey and it my body responded really well with it. So that was very, very helpful. The fifth thing I did to get my period back was spent time with loved ones. This was a hard thing to do, but it was also nice. And I should say it's a hard thing because as you're gaining weight, it's... I was afraid to spend time with loved ones because they would see my body changing and I was afraid of what they would think of me because I was always a skinny, lean person. But then once I got past that, I just loved spending time with friends, with family, and I was in living in Tampa, Florida, and I didn't have any friends then. They literally met me at the beginning of my journey, so they knew no, no other version of me. Um, and I didn't get anxiety when I went, went out with them or when I hung out with them and I was open and honest with what I was going through so they understood when I couldn't go work out or whatever. But what was stressful was when I was going to see my family after not seeing them for months. However, since I told them about my journey in the beginning, they were all very loving and supportive. Of course, you hear some sm snarky comments from some people, but overall, it was just amazing. I had so much love and support, and it really just helped me continue down my journey and having that, those check-ins with people, like with my boyfriend, with my mom, they really made sure that I wasn't falling back into old habits. My sister, and really committing to this and making sure I was getting healthy. The sixth thing I did to get my period back was start a hobby that was completely unrelated to food and exercise. To me, this hobby was, I didn't really start it, I guess, because I was always journaling, but I started a blog. And blogging to me was very, very nice to just let my thoughts go. I actually was sharing my journey in my blog and I've always loved writing since I was little. I love making up stories. I love writing about whatever is on my mind, obviously, because I like to journal. And this was something that really just gave me a purpose and it felt made me really happy. I was sharing some uh, recipes that I was making during the time of going through my HA recovery. And I know I said it's unrelated to food or exercise, but since I am passionate about food and exercise still, it's not gonna be completely out of my life. However, this hobby started as unrelated. And then, I also was reading more. I was reading really everything, like self-help books, I was reading fiction books, I love mystery books, and yet embracing that part of my life that I kind of let go when I was in school because I didn't have enough energy to read after studying engineering stuff, engineering courses all day. And this, by having a hobby that's unrelated to food and exercise, makes you realize that there's more to life than food and exercise. There's so much more to do, you could join a knitting club, you could go on more walks outside, you can go exploring, you could play video games if you like, whatever it is, just there's so much more than exercise and food. And yes, exercise and food are essential for well-being and having a healthy life, but your life does not have to be revolved around both of those. The final thing, number seven, that I did to get my period back was I found a support group and a community. And this is thanks to Laura Schoenfeld's program. It was called Get Your Period Back and there was a Facebook group with women going through something similar. I was obsessed with going on her Facebook group. It helped me stay accountable. It helped me work out things in my head that I was just making up. It helped me from falling back into old habits and patterns. And it just was amazing seeing other women going through what I was going through to know once again, I'm not alone. It's one thing hearing people on podcasts and reading their blog, and it's another thing actually messaging them, talking to them over Facebook video and connecting and sharing your experiences and having them give you feedback 
that was amazing and that really, really did help make sure that I committed to this journey. I already mentioned my loved ones that helped me stay accountable, so thanks to them as well, I was able to get my period back and sure, it was a rocky situation when I first got my, my period back. I tried going back into old habits a little too quickly, which I shouldn't say a little too quickly because I'm not going back to old habits at all. I changed my lifestyle, I would say, I did a 180 since then, but it took me a while. I would kind of go put my foot in the puddle of old habits and then take it back and just keep going and then come back. And it took a lot of that until I was finally committed to this new way of living and accepting that I didn't have to go back to being this lean, crazy, exercise machine person. And I liked being feeling like a woman. I liked feeling like a human and not a machine. I was being more and not doing as much and just connecting into who I really wanted to be and what I like to do. So that's everything that I have for you today. Those are my seven things that helped me get my period back. Like I said, this is the beginning of this series that I'll be doing and I want you to let me know if this has been helpful for you, if you're struggling with HA or something similar. I just wanna remind you that HA you don't have to have a certain body weight to go through hypovolemic amenorrhea. I was actually at a completely normal BMI when I started my recovery because like I said, my metabolism was low and I gained weight because my metabolism was low. So technically I had a normal BMI, but that didn't ma matter because my stress load, remember my video, on orthorexia, talking about the stress load. So my stress load was up here because of the lack of sleep, the lack of food, the increase in exercise, and just being stressed in general. And I needed it to be down here to be healthy. And sure, I did gain weight, and but I didn't become obese. I didn't become unhealthy. I gained weight and now I'm losing weight. So if that's the thing that's holding you back from going and getting your period back, don't let it be. Weight is literally something that will fluctuate your entire life and it isn't permanent, but if you damage your body, your body's gonna need to heal and that's one way it's going to heal. That's the last thing I wanted to say about this because it's very, very important and tune into next video, um, probably not next week, but in a couple weeks, maybe the week after, um, and I'll have a, another conversation going about this. We need to keep it going so more women feel confident enough to get their period back and to just spread the word that it is not healthy to not have a menstrual cycle. There are bad things that can happen to your health and I will talk about that later. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, like it down below, subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you.